Hi guys, welcome back to Wildebeard Reviews, and welcome back to the Rewind Review series here on the channel where we're talking about Grant Morrison's run on New X-Men. Today we're on to issue 131. Now, in this issue, there are two interpersonal relationships that start to form. Neither of them seem very healthy at all. We'll get into this. You can probably guess one of them that starts uh, in this issue. Uh, it involves one of the, the person here on the cover. So we're going to talk about that and um, especially for the Emma Frost uh, Scott Summers relationship that really starts um, in this one. We've seen hints at it before. We're really just going to kind of talk about this uh, their relation or what happens between them in this issue and we'll just continue to commentate on it um, issue by issue. Um, it's been a long time since I've read um, this run as I've mentioned a few times so I don't remember exactly how it all plays out and where all of the character motivations are and, and everything like that so we're going to tiptoe around it a little bit but we'll commentate on what happens in this particular issue so let's go ahead uh, and dive into this one. Now I gotta say this this is this issue has some incredible art. I don't always commentate on the art because I usually focus more on the story, um, but this one is uh, uh, drawn by Leon and inked by Bill Sienkiewicz, and it's just really, really cool. So we start off here with this um, page where we've got a couple planes uh, up in the air, um, and you can see um, Emma Frost uh, saying, uh, so who was this dark star anyway? And Scott replies, Emma, please, I have to concentrate, or else the next funeral is going to be mine. Apparently, uh, Emma is uh, intruding into Scott's brain space as he's trying to uh, pilot a plane. And then we go here to uh, the funeral for the fallen X-Man, Dark Star, who was uh, killed by fan or killed not killed by phantom x her body was kind of killed by phantom x but i guess she really died due to weapon 12 we had a lot of discussions about that when we reviewed a last issue i won't get into it here but again this art is is really really cool it actually kind of reminds me um uh just that the kind of pencil work reminds me a lot of of uh o osha um, the guy who did um, um, Hawkeye, um, the Matt Fraction Hawkeye, but I also love the kind of coloration here and the inking. Um, that reminds me a little bit of Alex Malevin, of course, throwing back to um, Bill Sienkiewicz's more classic stuff back in the 80s, like uh, New Mutants, Demon Bear, and, and stuff like that. So we've got our, our X-Men here at the funeral. Um, uh, Xavier here saying, uh, Dark Star, our sister, is dead. She died protecting the lives of others. She laid down her life for the dream. So I, I'd like to, uh, you all to join me in a telepathic experience. Close your eyes and taste the life of Leanna Petronova and understand what we have lost today. And that's really cool, you know, being able to um, share it like a telepathic experience um, about um, their fallen comrade there at the funeral. Really cool idea. Um, I wish that had kind of been maybe explored a little bit more. We only get this first page here um, of the funeral. And then we turn the page here, and we'll get to the story in a minute, but look at this original ad for the Firefly TV show. How cool is that? I just kind of had to go... Oh, when I turned the page and saw this, reading it again, from the critically acclaimed creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Joss Whedon gave new blood to vampires. Now he turns his unique vision to space, Firefly. Too bad Fox couldn't see his unique vision and canceled it. F you, Fox. All right. Moving on, so we go here to the Xavier Institute where Warren Worthington, Angel or Archangel, my apologies, is giving a class to all of the flyers there at um, at Xavier's. He kind of gives some uh, some pointers here, and then of course Angel is there being Angel, and she kind of dumps on him. He says, "I'm not gonna fly uh, any damn way." Who says uh, you know what's best for me? If I had my way, I'd have these wings cut off by the top of Beverly Hill Circus. And I'd rather be normal than be a freak like you guys. So just Angel being Angel, being who um, who that character is, at least at this point in in her story. And Angel responds, or a Archangel responds, uh, Angel and and Beak, uh, Angel, right? Uh, Beak, how about you? And he says, I'm hoping to go into space to help with the relief work, uh, but I have no wings to reach the spaceship. And we see it on the next page, but that uh, Shi'ar spaceship from uh, a few issues back is still there on Earth, and they're going to go fly um, to the spaceship. And a our Archangel says, um, look, uh, you, you look fit enough to me, Barnell. You just need 
need to let go and relax, follow me. Remember to sail on the peaks and the troughs. If you make it to the Shi'ar flagship, you can consider today's lesson well earned. And so all the flyers um, take off, leaving uh, Angel Salvatore and Beak there drinking beer in class, I guess, Archangel lets them drink beer in class. I wish my teachers back in college would let me drink beer in class. Um, and so they're bas she's basically kind of dumping on on everything, right? She says here, um, uh, confidence and concentration. Look at them. I'm all trying to be famous superheroes like teacher. How about money and smugness being all that you need? Calling himself Angel, right? And then offers him some beer. And apparently, um, Beak is a straight edge hardcore. My body is my temple kind of person. Um, and then uh, he kind of says here, um, maybe a guy like me could seem normal if he got to go hang out um, in space. And she says, dream on. There's nothing normal about this stupid place, least of all you. Damn, Angel, calm down. And she keeps giving him crap here, even like yelling Kentucky at him, like making a chicken joke. That's that's pretty mean. And so he says, buck you, because he can't drop the F-bomb in a PG-rated Marvel comic. And then he um, he tries to, to fly and, and falls um and falls you see the feathers uh drop in there and then we get a moment here where she goes down there to him and lays a big old kiss on him now we find out later that um all the other people in the class bet her that she wouldn't do it and she did it to get the money but knowing what we know in in hindsight this is a 2002 book i think it's october uh 2002 uh just this year we saw um in ed brisson's new mutants as part of don of x that these two characters are happily married and they've got a whole slew of kids so it's nice to see this relationship uh ends up in a very healthy place it doesn't start off in a healthy place with a bet much like some sort of um uh you know teen romance comedy you know of the of the 90s or the 2000s fame but um it's nice to see the kind of seeds of later story arcs um come into play then we get um beast and emma here talking apparently that line that beast said to his ex-girlfriend trish about how he says maybe i'm gay that kind of took fire because i think she's a reporter and now he's on the cover and <laughs> with beast saying i'm as gay as it gets although we all know that he's not gay actually um emma here says uh, i actually know for sure you've never had any physical or any kind of physical relationship with another man i even know uh you've made hoax phone calls to superheroes headquarters when you were younger didn't you so we know and he's just kind of bsing with the media, he says, uh, I'm doing this to challenge perceived notions about language, gender, and species. I'm also learning to play the drums. Please excuse me, Emma. I've got medical class in five minutes. And before he leaves, he says, oh, and by the way, don't mess with Scott and Jean's marriage. It's undignified and Jean will kill you. And she says, hoof, as she sits there in her, like, fur uh, um, robe with uh, one of those stick uh, um, cigarette filters like uh, Corella DeVille has um, in 101 Dalmatians. Cool, cool stuff there. Just, you know, Emma being Emma, and here we go. We get more and more Emma. So Scott is still flying the plane, and that's when Emma intrudes onto Emma, and uh, Logan's also there in the plane um, with him. And, uh, Emma intrudes and says, uh, "Big sister is watching. It's hard enough keeping tabs on your every on everyone without you distract me. I can't believe what some mutants are up to right now in the privacy of their own homes. Oh, only Emma would be in intruding like that." And then um, uh, Emma says, uh, or Scott says, uh, "I was in the air most of the time. We didn't get a chance to talk. Talking to Emma and saying we didn't get a chance to talk in a very uh, in much of a way that you wouldn't that you don't know what they're talking about." And um, Logan actually responds to what Scott is saying, um, and then this is when things really start to go get interesting. They start a kind of psychic therapy session, so Emma kind of dials into his brain. Um, she sees through the ruby quartz and, um, in his eyes, and he says, no, uh, the light turns yellow in the ruby quartz shield, Emma, and she says, oh, I knew that, just trying to get you in the mood. Scott, stop being so literal. Fly with Emma. What mood is Emma trying to to get him um, into? And so they're in this um, kind of psychic um, 
astral plane, maybe psychic uh, space here, workspace here. So they're in a plane here, and they're about to, to parachute out. And she says, uh, I summered here in these long, hot days following the incident which left my uh, ghastly finishing school in flames and my head mistress, head mistress penniless South Province, or at least my memory of it. And now I'm making uh, your memories of the wind and air pressure to make it seem more convincing. Aren't I clever? So, of course, if you don't know um, some of Cyclops' history, um, his father, or he and his brother, uh, Alex, and, or Havoc, and their father, um, uh, Christopher Summers, uh, Corsair, were in a plane up in Alaska, I believe, when the plane was attacked by a Shi'ar um, scout shuttle, something like that and they took uh, their father and that's how he became Corsair and then Scott and his brother Alex had to parachute out and that's where Scott got his head injured and that's why he can't control his optic beams. At least that's the story that I remember. Maybe that's been retconned but that's at least the the broad strokes that I remember so he would absolutely um, have memories of these and they might even be upsetting um, for, for him. I don't know if uh, Emma thought of that or maybe she's trying to rattle his cage as Emma would be want to do. She continues on here. Um, it's just long-range super telepathy, Scott. Made possible by this lovely Cerebro machine. I'm quite drunk from the sensation of ten times the prying power. And Scott says, I need a little marriage guidance, Emma. That's all. And what exactly... And she says, and what exactly... And that's exactly what we're going to do, Scott. Trust me. So you can see here, this is where things start to fall apart. Scott is very much like, look, I just need some advice on my marriage. As as um, Emma says on the next next page, or the couple pages, she's a registered sex therapist. Um, so it would make sense that he's coming to her based on the coolness or coldness of the, uh, the Grey Summer's bedroom that we've talked about a few times in this run so far. But she is uh, addressing this in a very very playful way that ends up in a, in a bad spot here in a little bit. So um, Scott jumps out and he says, uh, I've heard that one before, why can't you just be straight with me? Why can't anyone be straight with me? And she says, because we live in a bendy world, dear, let go. Tell all your troubles to Miss Frost. And as he pulls his chute, I love the kind of symbolism here. All this history and baggage comes pouring out of the parachutes. You got these um, old, like, OG Silver Age costumes. Then you've got um, the 90s, uh, more 90s costumes along with um, the Black Queen costume. You can kind of see that with the uh, the corset and the whip and everything coming out of there. Then the uh, the Marvel uh, girl costume, maybe from the the Claremont era, coming out. I kind of love that the uh, the the symbolism and iconography of all that baggage flowing out of it. Maybe Scott letting all of that baggage go. Really, really cool stuff there. Um, and he actually says, "Here's this supposed to be symbolic, Emma, because it, it feels like gravity. It feels like I'm falling. Stop this." And she says, "Save your breath for impact. Let's aim for my cousin at Jokos. There's a memory of uh, her wedding." below and I've always wanted to ruin it. Emma being Emma. So as they fall down, um, they fall onto this ramp full of pillows and end up in a bedroom because of course they do because uh, Jean's or not Jean Emma's doing what Emma does and you can see um, Scott kind of reacts in real in uh, in the real world and uh, Logan says ah you keep daydreaming Summers uh, I'll, 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 I'll fly a plane. Thanks Thanks, Logan. You do that. And uh, he's, he actually says, yeah, thanks, Logan. And then Emma kind of whispers sweet nothings right here. You can tell. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up um, too well. But the her speech bubbles right here, the, the font is shrunken down a little bit. And it's printed in a gray, not the, the dark black of the regular um, speech rolls. You can tell that she's kind of whispering it, being very low-key. She says, take Logan's advice. Let you, uh, you, your left brain can handle him yapping away like a dog your right brain needs all the help it can get and so they're here in this very intimate setting um and she says uh which is where i as the x-men's only qualified sex therapist there it is comes to the rescue and he says i don't feel safe here uh that's all where wherever here is it's like everyone's watching uh like i'm doing something wrong so continuing that kind of uptightness for scott but he also says he doesn't feel safe there so you can kind of feel that emma is putting pressure on him especially with the the way that they're arranged there for, for for lack of a better word um 
And Emma says, we're swapping thoughts. That's all. Telepaths do it all the time. How do you think Gene and the professor while, uh, while away their long hours abroad together? And he says, I don't need this. What do you know uh, about me or Gene or any of us? So you can keep telling that she's the one kind of pressuring this relationship. Uh, and so they just kind of keep uh, going on uh, that way there. And she says... Um, uh, Scott says, I know Jean has a temper, and Emma says, a temper? For God's sake, Scott, she uh, she once almost erased half my brain. I was left drooling and incontinent for a month. I'd think very carefully before crossing swords with Jean. Believe me. No, you're not, Emma. No, you're not, because that's exactly what you're doing here. And uh, Scott says, she's never been that way with me. Emma replies, actually, I love this picture of, of Emma right here. Really, really cool. Um great art uh she says we've all seen well we've all seen uh her worst and survived it but you no one really knows what volcanic passion scott summers struggles to repress struggles to repress she's afraid of you and he says i would never hurt gene and no matter what i think she knows it too and you can really see the struggle on on his face here and i like the way the art kind of takes her out and let Scott stand on his own and react to what uh, Emma is saying off off screen here or out of frame. Uh, she says, uh, you think she knows, but you've never really told her. What is that, Scott? What's the big optic blast you're holding back from us this time? Are you afraid she'll blow you'll blow Jean to smithereens if you don't tell if you tell her you don't love her anymore? And he says, I'll always love her. It's just We've both changed so much. Everything's changed. I used to think I was special. I tried to be a good husband. But underneath the lies and the acting, I'm just like everyone else. And she says, spare me the bloody obvious, Scott. You were So you were possessed for five minutes by an evil spirit. You showed uh, He showed you the dark corners of your soul that you never knew you had. Blah, blah, blah. But when do we reach this scandal, Scott? The real dirt in its most pure, concentrated, and embarrassing little nuggets. And he says, give me a break, Emma. This is hard enough. And she says, the perfect marriage of the world's most beloved mutant heroes has fallen into ruin. Where, how, why, and where did it all go so wrong? I think there's only one way to find out. We'll play a little game of superheroes and heroines, shall we? You be Scott, and I'll be Jean. And then she dresses in this dark phoenix costume. And Scott asks... Is this still telepathy? Is this is this still telepathic therapy, Emma? Or are we having some kind of weird affair right now? Yes, yes, Scott, you're having some kind of weird affair. Actually, not yet. You're not having a weird affair quite yet. We go back to the plane. Actually, I I, I like what happens here. Um, uh, because we go back to, to Angel and Beak, but it does kind of interrupt the the tension of the scene uh, with between uh, Jean or between not between not between Jean between Emma and and Scott right there. And then we see what we were talking about. He's all excited that he got kissed, and then they exchange the money and just kind of classic kind of teenager story um, right there. And then we go back to to the the big finish here, where Emma says, "So anyway, I am power and song and life incarnate. But the truth is, no matter how hard I try." I can't help playing with fire. How about you, darling? And he says, sure, Gene, why not? And that's where we end this issue. Okay, now I think you're having some kind of weird affair uh, there, Scott Summers. So there we go. That's kind of the, the real true beginnings of this relationship between Emma and Scott. We've seen hints of it before, especially with what happened in uh, Hong Kong between them. She came to his room late at night with a bottle of champagne and a couple of glasses, and we don't really know what happened with that. And even before that, he had uh, her on his mind, um, thinking about about her and Jean kind of called that out. So we will see where this goes. I remember some of this relationship from when I read this the first time, but like I've said a few times, it was like 15 years ago. So we'll see where this goes. I know this is a sore spot for a lot of people. Um, so we'll we'll just kind of take this one issue by issue. So guys, what did you think of issue 131 of Grant Morrison's New X-Men? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If it's your first First time here at the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. It would mean a lot. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.